while meshing a CAD model, you will have to be careful about the type of mesh elements you choose. Primarily, meshing elements are classified as 1D, 2D and 3D. In addition to these, there is a fourth type called special elements which we will be talking about in a different video. In this video, we will try to understand why we need these many types of elements and their practical significance. To decide the element type, pay attention to three quantities the size and shape of the model, the type of analysis you plan on doing, and finally, the time that has been allocated for the project. Let us talk about the first factor, the size and shape of the object. All objects in real life are 3D, but we can be clever and simplify them to reduce the problem dimension. Let us take this beam for example. It's clearly a 3D object. However, we could simplify this beam as a one-dimensional beam with two nodes and one element. The only input here would be the area of cross-section. We could similarly take a slice or mid-surface of the beam and mesh it with pure quad elements. This would result in a slightly higher number of nodes, let us say 900 nodes. Finally, we could create a tetra mesh which would result in a three-dimensional mesh, way more nodes, which in this case is 15,000. Now, each node has six degrees of freedom. Hence, the 1D beam element has only 12 degrees of freedoms to compute, which is 12 unknowns. The 2D beam element has 5,400 DOFs to compute and 3D beam element, 90,000. To compute the degrees of freedom, Take the number of nodes and multiply it by 6. The size of your stiffness matrix is proportional to the available DOFs. Hence, 1D would be the best mesh for this problem because it results in the smallest stiffness matrix which would result in the smallest computational time. Now, if the geometry has a complex 3D shape, then we might not be able to use the 1D mesh option but always check to see if you can use 1D meshing to get the job done. Typically, in industry problems, the mesh is a combination of 1D, 2D and 3D elements. This will result in faster simulation time. The second factor which determines the type of mesh is the analysis type. For structural and fatigue analysis, quads and hex elements are preferred. For crash and non-linear analysis, we still try to get as many quad elements as possible, but we focus on something called as mesh lines. We'll talk about this later. For casting simulations, triangular elements are preferred over quads. Now, you might ask why we are preferring one element over the other. The reason for doing this generally boils down to the balance between result accuracy versus simulation time. Every automotive company has its own standard when it comes to choosing the element type. At the end of the day, if you have infinite time, you can use any element type and if the element length tends to zero, your accuracy would also tend to 100%. The final factor which determines the type of mesh is time. Every major meshing software company out there supports automatic meshing. Whenever sufficient time is not available to finish a project and results are required immediately, then engineers choose this particular option. Automatic meshing definitely is improving, but it is not still as good as an experienced meshing engineer. However, automatic meshing still gets the job in a fraction of a time and is still being used whenever a project is time sensitive. Once you've watched this video, please finish the reading assignments and challenges. You can find the links for the same under the video. If you're watching this video on YouTube, consider enrolling into this course to gain full access to the videos, assignments and projects. Thanks for watching. Bye.